Today on Q and J, stuff. Good stuff. Q and J. Hey everyone, welcome to another Q and J. As always, my name is J, and it's time to Q some J's Q's. So as always, uh, thank you very much for leaving your comments and your questions in your uh, in the video section. And uh, yeah, just thank you in general. It's, it's time to talk about stuff. It's been a couple weeks. Um, this is being filmed on a Thursday night. I figure I had a little extra time, so I might as well film it now because tomorrow I'm going to be busy. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get my. I don't know if I'll be getting the model that I ordered. I ordered the new Spore Assist and uh, the Wood Dwarf accompanying it. It'll either come tomorrow or Monday, and I'll do a review accordingly. Either that, or I'll put up that Cipher review that I still put up. I gotta put it up because it was filmed, so it's okay. So without further ado, we'll get to uh, the J, to the Q's, to J. David, David Dite, David Dite, David Dite, David Dite says. Star-Lord, guys, come on. That's true. Star-Lord. My costume was Star-Lord on Halloween. Very good point. The lads love to say J. Thanks again. I was last comment, lol. Just a quickie this time. A Rubik named after the... Is Rubik named after the Rubik's Cube or just the standard Rubik name? Uh, technically after the mathematician that the cube is named after. Yeah. Pretty much. That's straightforward. Oh, one more thing. What do you think of all the new Tyranid models coming out? Love them. A transport and two giant monstrosities. Plus, there is rumored. So there's rumors that la right, last week obviously was the um, the Toxicrine Malice Scepter, and I'm going to build a Toxicrine. Uh, this week is the Sporocyte and the other one, the two like uh, the Drop Pod. I'm I'm only going to get one, but I think I need like five. I know Matt's going to order six. He said. Um, for himself. And uh, next week is rumored to be a new Venom Thrope uh, Zone Thrope kit. So, all are amazing. I love all of them. And uh, the rules for the Malice Scepter, yeah, I'll see the rules for the other thing tomorrow. But, something has to be coming. I'm very suspicious right now. Um, I'm believing the rumors that a Tyranid Codex supplement is on its way. Probably called Leviathan. Um, Something's up. Yeah, I just... Something's fishy. Why are Tyranids getting so much attention right now? Three straight weeks of models with no codex attached to them is a little fishy to me. So we'll see. As I said, people, if you have the digital codices, let me know if it automatically updated including them. That'd be pretty cool. It made me want to buy the digital codices. Archon Timatron. Hey, Archon Timatron. Hey Jay, I was wondering if you had a chance to check out any of my tactics or rules videos. Yes. Yes, I have. Oh, actually, you mentioned that in your next one. Just seen it. Thanks so much. No problem. Uh, and I've also been checking out lately your his series called Know Your Enemy. And I really liked the one on the Imperial Knight. So, keep it up, uh, Archon Timatron. He is a Dark Eldar player from Britain. And he's got a beard. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, let me see. <laughs> Sergeant Harker, nice costume and nice fog, Jay. Thank you. Uh, also, if you want to see a great game, watching two older players who are good at playing their lists, it's a very cool to watch. I agree. Also, Jay, seems I might be going to my first tournament to play. Uh, I've watched a couple of them. So excited for that to go on. Let's see how Harker does in a tougher setting. Excellent. Good luck on your tournament. Hopefully it might have already happened. But good luck. Let me know how you did. I'm very curious. Good luck, Sergeant Harker. Yeah, tournaments are fun. Um, I recommend tournaments. If Tournaments are great for just meeting a bunch of people, seeing some great uh, lists. Usually the, some really cool theme lists are at tournaments. Maybe some good paint jobs. And playing some games against some people you normally wouldn't. It, for me, I always loved going to go and meeting people and having a good time. And winning best sport a lot of the time. It was good, too. Mm -hmm. Hacker Trick Switch says, Nice costume and happy Halloween, Jay. More 40K how to play videos would be nice. Yes, uh, they're filmed. They'll be up next week, for sure. Um, the next one is how is setting up a game. So terrain, uh, rolling for objectives, rolling for first, that kind of stuff. And it'll be good. So 
We'll see. I'm kind of debating. We'll, we'll figure it out. But one will be up for sure next week. I've been filming it uh, on and off this week. So it should be good. And, yeah. Um, thanks again for all your hard work. Love the channel. Thank you very much, Echo Drink Switch. Thank you very much for your comment. Chris G says, Hey Jay, I started collecting Grey Knights about a month ago, and so far I have a librarian as my HQ, 15 or so Terminator models with various weapons, 10 interceptors, and 2 Nemesis Dread Knights. My question is, what models should I look for getting next? A Land Raider? That's just exactly what I was going to say, is Land Raider. Uh, a Land Raider, some Purifiers, and a Transport, Allied Grey, Grav Centurions. I don't really like the model for the Storm Raven, but getting an Inquisitor plus Henchman plus Valkyrie would be cool. Let me know. Your thoughts. So, yeah, if you want to stay pure Grey Knights, uh, Land Raider, for sure. Land Raider is a great transport, especially in 7th edition, for your Terminators. It's what I love. You, you see most of my lists, I involve a Land Raider. You already have two Dread Knights, so you're in great shape there. Because um, Dread Knights are... Pro I, I really should put my Dread Knight together. I don't know why I haven't. Um, Drago. I would say Drago. You didn't mention you have uh, Keldor Drago. To me, he's my favorite thing in the HQ. For, the more I use him, I love him. He's just hilarious. Put him in your army as a Lord of War, and you will have good times. He is really hard to kill mm -hmm. as a Lord of War. He is just hard. And his AP2 weapon is nasty. And if you're running into, if you ever run into ter uh, to, to, um, Terminator lists, they will fear Drago because Terminators... You know, they're used to surviving the uh, the Paladin's attacks, and Drago's going to come at Initiative 5 with his AP2 weapon and just blow them out of the water. So, Drago, for sure. Uh, if you want to start mixing up things, allies, then you start going, you know, then you could go your Grav, Centurions. Um, you might want to take just another Librarian as an HQ for your ally detachment. Just to give you more psychic hilarity. And you can also then take some psychic powers that you wouldn't normally take for Grey Knights. Um, or you can go, you know, the Inquisitor Valkyrie combination. You mentioned that you don't like the look of the uh, Storm Raven. But unfortunately, Storm Raven is also pretty amazing. It's the best fast attack choice in uh, the Codex, for sure. So, up to you. But I'd recommend, first one I'd recommend is Land Raider and Caldor Drago. But thank you very much for your question, Chris G. And good luck collecting Grey Knights. I love Grey Knights. Undead Pink says, Jay, playing with people on a live show sounds great. A good one to play would be Team Fortress 2. Doesn't have to be, doesn't have much to do with wargaming, but it's so much fun. Check out Team Fortress 2. I will. I'll definitely check out Team Fortress 2. I've been trying out various comp uh, combinations. I don't know if my computer's fast enough, but I'm going to try. I've been trying to get it running using... Um, I forgot what it's called. I forgot the software. I'm using a software. But I'll definitely see if I can get up on the, off the ground in the next few weeks. Because it'd be kind of fun. I'd sit at the same time every week. And I'd just put on like my Facebook page uh, when it starts. And then I'd just have to figure out a way like I have to get friends in the games or something like that. So, oh, maybe I should just talk to Owen and see how he does it. That'd be cool. Oh, as for Dark Eldar, what is your opinion on witches? They're okay. I don't think... I think Cabalite Warriors are better all around than witches, unfortunately, because witches kind of got nerfed. They got slightly cheaper, I think, but, uh, or the same, same, I don't know. I don't know if witches are going to be, they're, they're a cool option, and they're good for a theme army, but I don't think they're the most competitive. That's what, uh, I personally love them, especially when you put them with a succubus and a webway portal. That's what I'm saying. Like, they have some good combinations, they have their role, but I think uh, Cavalite Warriors are the better troops choice, personally. Thomas Whittle says, hey, RE, the Grey Knights data cards, I just sent you an email. Let me know if you don't get it. Oh, thank you. By the way, thank you very much, um, Thomas Whittle. You sent, I ended up communicating with you and you sent to me. That's awesome. So I want thank Thomas Whittle because he sent me the Grey Knight cards, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. I should make a um, video about that. I've gotten four emails lately about people trying to send me stuff. Yeah. Quiet One says, hi, Jay. Posted this in the wrong place. So do it again. As I don't know how YouTube works, do you get a credit for the advert if it stops before the end? It depends on the length of the video. Uh, if they're over a certain length, like if they're the three minute ones, if you watch past a certain point, we get credit for it, otherwise we don't. Uh, if they're the ones that are relatively short, we have to watch, you have to watch the full thing. Yes. Um, 
Also, does the same principle apply to the warp, even though it's a paid channel, i.e. you get subscription and advert credits? No. Um, in fact, the warp is, ad is advert free. So there's no advertising in the warp, and that's one of the benefits of the paid channels is that we offer uh, no advertising. So I get paid for the subscriptions, but none of, there's no advertisings before the videos or during the video or on the side. Um, so that way it's all advertising free. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Quiet One. Uh, Quiet One says, hi again. I think their confusion in the challenges is the use of the word wounds. There is no mention of to hits. So this raises the point, can the troops roll to hit the mob in the challenge? The rules were meant to be more accurate now, so you can't roll to hit. You have no wounds to allocate. This would lead the troops not being able to hit the single character in a challenge. No, I believe it's just the, the specific word, and you should be able to roll to hit the character in a challenge. A squad against an individual character can roll to hit that character, providing they have no one else to, uh, to attack. I think that's the way, because otherwise, in the previous codex, sort of the previous edition, they had an implicit ruling about the, it was called like the, it was almost the cheerleading section, you know, it was the, they were there to support the, the guy, but they removed that. So by removing that, they, I believe it implicitly matches their, their wording. Percy Hudson says, hey Jay, thanks for answering my question. I have been painting for quite some time and have a lot of experience in mixing colors. I don't think I've ever had to mix a bone color and wanted to know if you know how to mix something close to Shabti bone. I'm trying to paint my first set of orc boys and so my choices are either more boys or citadel paints. So I'd like to avoid the paints in favor of more models if possible. Um, yeah, to mix with Shabti Bone, it just depends. You just need to find a mid-tone brown and add white. Um, unfortunately, I can't tell you the exact ratio because it would depend on the specific brown. But Shabti Bone is is a very very light brown, so you can get that effect, or you can get very close to the effect with a mid-tone brown and white. You can mix it to almost that effect. As I said, it unfortunately just depends on what type of paints you're using, but uh, it is possible to mix to a Shabti bone. You just need to find, white will have to be your mix because a Shabti bone is usually your off color uh, mixing color. So you have to use white if you're using generic paints and a brown and mix them accordingly. Just any mid generic brown you could probably knock up. Hope that answers your question, Percy Hudson. Unfortunately, as I said, without the specific color arrangements, if you tell them a company or something, then it would be a little easier. Sebastian Hip, the jail room, says, Hi, Jay, several cues to Jay for you there. Cool. Number one, do you think there's going to be a Stormclaw-like set for Blood Angels versus Tyranids? I've heard rumors, and I would understand if so, especially with all these new Tyranid models coming out. We'll see. I've heard rumors, and I would totally see that coming. Followed by codices for both now since the Malice Scepter and the Tentacle Buddy is released. Yeah, I'm thinking there's going to be a codex supplement for Tyranids. And number two, which one of the Forge or Primark models do you like the most? Uh, Vulcan? Yeah, Vulcan. Or uh, Typhus. Um, which one has not been made would you like to see? I love Vulcan. Can't wait to see... Lehman Russ. Oh, Lehman Russ would be a great one. I'd love to see Lehman Russ. Very good question. Sorry, I don't mean to copy you. Uh, I love Typhus. I love Horus. And... Yeah. Um, who else? Vulcan. Yeah, Vulcan to me is the best. Vulcan and Typhus to me look the best of all the models. And then I also like Horus. Horus looked pretty cool too. And I'd love to see Lehman Russ. That would be actually really cool. Number three, do you know a quick and easy way to make lava on bases? Um, I did make a lava base tutorial from Ninja Painting 101, but it's probably not out yet. Um, what I just do is, the quickest and easiest way is to batch paint using um, drying retardants and just wet blend really quickly. So you start with, you use reds and yellows, essentially, and maybe a white. What I do is I go through the reds and mix the yellows in to create the oranges, go yellows and reds, but it, uh, sorry, and white with yellow at the end in the center. Um, 
that's the way I do it to make it the quickest. Airbrush is the, by far the quickest. So if you have an airbrush, it will save you a whole lot of time and just use uh, a dark red, medium tone red, and then a light red, and then mix yellows in to make the oranges, yellows to do yellows, and then a white yellow at the end. And an airbrush would save you a lot of time. You just go a thinner line and focus more central each time. For how much is the White Dwarf weekly in Canada? Uh, five bucks. Pretty sure it's about five dollars. Five or six dollars. It's either four ninety nine or five ninety nine. In Sweden, it's thirty five kroners. Kr, I think, is kroners. Maybe not. Roughly five U.S. dollars. Yeah, about five Canadian dollars. Five or six dollars Canadian. Jim White says, Jay, do you still have the Imperial Guard troops you were painting two years ago? And if so, is this a mystery army that you have alluded to? I do have them, but I painted them for a tutorial. And I got them for free. Um, it is not the mystery army. I do actually have l some Imperial Guard models. Some Apocalypse models from Imperial Guard. Maybe I'd ally them one time. No, the, alarm, the army I alluded to in, in October is Necrons. Um, it's Necron Vember painting challenge this month, and my goal is to have about 3,000 points of painted Necrons by the end of the month. Now, I'm not going to paint all of them this month. I have painted some prior to this challenge, but uh, that's my goal, to have about 3,000 plus points of Necrons. Um, and then slowly but surely I'll build up my Space Marines as well. And I have even another, I gotta stop collecting armies, but I'm addicted. And it is hilarious. I, yeah, there's another, even army. You'll see them. It's gonna be silly. Christian Oliver says, awesome as always, Jay. The Star Lord costume is great. Thank you very much. David Battaglia. David! I'm sorry, I say Battaglia, it's Battaglia. David Battaglia. I caught myself that time. Not Battaglia, Battaglia. Hey Jay, catching up on your videos after a great week at Utah Blue Table Paintings Valhalla Gamer Retreat. Yes, I am so jealous of that. You got to go to Valhalla and I heard it was an awesome time. I played many games with my orcs as well as combined games with some other great orc war bosses. Rich from BDP and Mike Grove. Mike Grove, oh yeah. A.K.A. Mike the Bartender, who lives near you. I gotta get, you know, Mike Grove, if you're out there, contact me. Uh, I found that Mega Knobs are quite good, especially if you include a Pain Boy, Doc HQ. Yes, because it gives them feel no pain. Which is great, because they don't have an involve. I found that uh, they can take boss pulls, so address is one weakness of the last codex, and the Pain Boy gives them vital feel no pain, which is definitely needed. Yes. Throw them in a truck and flat out into their lines. Put them in a looted wagon with triple scorches and flat out into the lines and then you can uh, unload them and flame away. Looted wagon. Can orcs still take looted wagon? That's a debate on that. Uh, a battle wagon maybe is what it meant. Or a battle wagon. True. And get them across as well. If you toss in a war boss with mega armor and a lucky stick, you have a beast of a unit that laughs off small army fire. That's true. This unit... This unit had a grand time multi-assaulting guard squads with tanks. And tanks. Good times. I tried some Scorcha buggies, outflank, and they had some great moments as well. I never got my Storm Boys to work out quite right. But they definitely were a threat and often attracted fire away from my other units. Anyway, hope you find inspiration from this and happy gaming. Definitely find inspiration. Gotta love orcs. I love orcs. You know I love orcs, David Battaglia. Battaglia. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. I'm glad to hear you had an awesome time. I'm really happy that you did, because uh, I would have loved to go maybe next year. Um, I hear they were kind of working their details around, as you mentioned, uh, for Valhalla. But it would be awesome to go to Valhalla one day and meet everyone and have a great time. Totes jealous. Or as people say, totes jelly? Nurgle's Grin says, hey Jay, are you excited about the new tier models? 100% yes, I am. I really love the look of the Malice Scepter, but I'm not going to play it. Uh, the more I think about it, Toxicrine all the way. I love the look of the new Spore Pods. They are beautiful, and I love the look of the new Venom Throw, Zone Throw Kit with a new kind of version of a Doom. So, yes. They look pretty cool. I hope they have a good stat and rules. I think that'd be good to get one of each. I agree, and I'm getting them for sure. Dr. Roctopus, one of my favorite names on YouTube, says, I feel you on the Ultramarines. They are portrayed to portrayal, leave something to be desired, but they have this really nice... Greco-Roman culture, I agree, mm -hmm. that I really like, but they can do no wrong, which isn't that appealing, for me at least. Yeah, they're kind of like um, Captain America 
You know, I've seen a lot of parallels between them and Captain America. The thing is about Captain America, which makes him one of the most boring uh, superheroes, is that he just doesn't do any wrong. You know, and he's not a very fallen hero. He just, he's the good guy, and he's always doing the good thing with the good people, and that's why I really love the, um, his, out of all the relationships in the Avengers, I always loved, when I looking at the comics or the TV show, I loved his relationship with, um, with Stark, Tony Stark, Iron Man, because Iron Man is such a chauvinist, and he, he does the right thing as well, but he will, he'll break as many rules to try to do the right thing, versus, um... Captain America, who's always just like, follow the rules. Mm -hmm. On to the cues. With the Tyranid Bugs, what completely new kits would you like to see in the future? Um, see, I would have said Spore Pods, but they're back out. I think that'd be great. Uh, Tyranids right now, I'm actually really happy with the kits. Not the rules, but the kits themselves, I'm very happy with. Other than... Yeah, maybe if they brought back the Parasite and Mortrax and made him, he'd be a cool kid. Because the Doom is kind of coming back and Spore Pods are coming, kind of coming back. Personally, I want a plastic Super Heavy for Space Marines. That'd be cool. I like that. See, I'd love that if they brought the Super Heavies in plastic form to the other groups. Like, that we do have the Super Heavy Stompa for Orcs, which is plastic. Um, it would be cool if, if they got like a Hierophant or even a Barbed Hero Drool. would be cool. I love the look. And I did order one from Forge World, uh, I ordered a um, Diamond Caron, so that'll be cool. Hopefully it'll come eventually. And then Gargantuan Creatures, or Super Heavies, for those who don't want to have them outside of Forge World. Just level the playing field. Yep, I agree. Very good question, Dr. Octopus. But with Tyranids right now, I think, uh, the problem is the Forge World models are so amazing too. I think just... For, for design purposes, Tyranids are by far my favorite army for the look. Or Orcs. One or the other. But Tyranids have such beautiful models. The rules is where they kind of lack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Canis Lupus, 1396, says, What was that smoke effect at, 16, at 640? Um, it was a bad smoke effect because I accidentally looped it. But it's actually from M Smokes, a product from v Motion VFX. Um, I use a couple Motion VFX um, products. I have their M Dust, which I added dust into my intro for the free content. And I added smoke uh, into this video, a couple other videos that I've made. But one of them was the dance video that I had to make for the thriller video for my wife. But it's called M Smokes. It's a product by uh, Motion VFX. And it has like a thousand, not a thousand, probably like a hundred files of smoke that you can put in front of videos. It was fun doing it. Andrew McCormick says, Hi Jay, Eldar, question, what is the best section in the Codex for you? Fast attack. Fast attack. Jet bikes. Or heavy support, depending on your themed list. Wraith. Anything Wraith in the heavy support is amazing. Or the elites. Um... I'd say fast if you're into bikes. To me, the bike lists are the most insane. So probably fast attack. I think it has to be fast attack. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you agree, Andrew McCormick. I generally feel nine hornets, and but it bothers me that I can't also feel shadow, sh shadow specters. That's true. Hawks and warp spiders without going under unbound. Yes. Warp spiders, to me, are one of my favorite units in the entire codex. I love them. When they deep strike in and just blow away in a squad at a time. I love them. And the bikes. The bikes are just all oh, the bikes. I'm hoping I'm holding out on a new FOC but can't see it without a supplement. True. Very good point. Thank you very much for your question, Andrew McCormick. Alfaris Omegon says, Jay, I have about uh, 350 USD to spend on Imperial Guard and I was wondering what to get of these two options. Comrade Yark's Superhuman Wave of 100 Guardsmen or Stormlord and Acadian Defense Force. I personally find the Superhuman Wave to be hilarious, but I really don't want to have to paint 100 guys. What do you think? I agree. Um, 
I see the wave, the human wave, being fun, and it could be quasi-competitive depending on how you run it. Um, if you're if you play in a meta that allows the uh, Shadow Scepter or sorry, Stormlord, then you I'd recommend the Stormlord for sure, because a Stormlord and a Cadian Defense Force that is a very reasonable amount of painting. But 100 bodies, I'm doing a painting challenge right now, and if you're not up for painting them, and Imperial Guard have some good detail on them, uh, I'd recommend getting the Stormlord and, and Defense Force, because that's not a lot of models in the end. Def uh, the uh, large tanks are actually relatively easy to paint. Uh, I'm going to do a tutorial on one very soon, and uh, they're, they're pretty easy to paint, and they, they're a lot of points, So and they're amazing. The Stormlord's amazing, and shows the Shadow Sword and um, the Bane Blade. They're all great. So if you if you play in a meta that allows the Stormlord, I'd recommend the Stormlord. Because, yeah, <laughs> superhuman wave of 100 guardsmen. You could do it. Like, it would be awesome. But if you're not up for painting, I don't recommend it. Bradley McDuff says, Hey, Jay, I was wondering, what's your rule regarding painting non-Deathwing Ravenwing units in bikes termite armor? For example, the Terminator Captain or the Chaplain on a bike. What's my rule regarding painting non Deathwing Ravenwing units in bikes? Turn it on. I'm sorry, I don't know what it means about rule. Uh, I just paint them normally. So Terminator Captain would be painted in Deathwing colors, and a Chaplain would be black. Yeah, I don't mind. Like I just match the I match the. Um, I match the colors accordingly. So if it's in Terminator armor, I usually paint Deathwing colors. But uh, as you mentioned, a chaplain is usually black anyway, so I'd paint them black. Like an apothecary in Terminator armor, I'd still paint white, primarily. Hope that answers your question. Feel free to clarify in the comment section down below if I if I mistaken your question. Shane, hi Jay. First, love your channel. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. Second question. When you are sorted out how many dice you have for your psychic phase, do you roll them all at once, or would you roll for each individual unit? I.e., two squads of Brain Knight Terminators. Would I roll two dice plus how many, however many dice I get for all of them at the start of the phase, or would I just roll separately for each squad? Oh no, what you do is, for your psychic powers, is each squad has a number of psychers in them. For example, Grey Knight Terminators are all, uh, they all have Brother of Psychers, so they're all Psychic Level 1, right? If you have a Librarian, he's Psychic Level 2 or 3. And what you do is you just roll one dice at the very beginning of your phase. One dice, period. And it's 1 to 6, and then you add that value to your all your other Psychic Mastery levels. So you just count up the, the squads. So a squad of Terminators would be 1. Uh, a Librarian would be two, so you'd up to three. Drago would add another two, so you'd up to five. And after you added up all your psychic levels of all your squads, you then take that number and add it to that one dice that you rolled at the beginning of your phase to give you your number of dice. So if I, for example, just clarify, so if I had just an army comprised of two Terminator squads and a Librarian, it was a Mastery Level 2, Terminator Squad 1 is worth one point, Terminator Squad 2 is worth one point, and the Librarian's worth two points, so 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 4, and if I rolled a 3 on the dice, 3 plus 4 is 7. And then I'd, I'd get 7 dice total. And that's how you decide how many psychic dice you get at uh, during your psychic phase. And then your opponent gets that value of the dice plus whatever their psychic powers are. Hope that answers your question, Shane. Master Dwaylen says, Hi Jay. Thank you for answering my previous comment. I have two questions in this episode, if you don't mind. I don't mind at all. I'm very curious. Number one, what do you think about brush primers? I can use spray primers, but there is no, there is so many things to look ab out about them. Weather, wind, distance. So I'm always a bit afraid when I use sprays. But there's a tutorial by the Apathetic Fish. Oh, I know Apathetic Fish. Check out his channel. He's a pro. He's a pro. He's very good. Um, about Vallejo paint primers. Have you ever tried them? Yes, I have. Or something similar. G black, GW Black Primers Paint 2, called Imperial Primer. 
but Vallejo's have multiple colors. Yes, I've tried them. They're good. No problem at all. Uh, the key is with them is make sure you don't apply them too heavily. Uh, so you got to get good coverage over your model. Uh, but that's it. They're good, and but they tend to be a little bit more on the expensive side. I find that I've, I've used them a couple times in the past, and I don't find I get as much um, painting out of them as I would a no the equal size of a spray primer. Now, I tend to use airbrush primers mostly, other than when I'm painting my Necrons right now that I'm using Army Painter. But uh, I, I work in, outside in a... In a uh, my workshop so I'm okay but I, I use I personally prefer airbrush primers because that way I can just prime with an airbrush I can do it inside um, obviously I said I work in a workshop outside but it's, it's a workshop and I that way I don't I'm not um, prone to wind conditions or any weather conditions but that being said uh, there's nothing wrong with brush primers at all nothing at all two when is paint thinner thinning necessary Thank you, Jay. Helps me a lot. Paint thinning, it's necessary when you're using an airbrush, for sure, if you're using non-airbrush specific paints. And it's never it's never necessary. Or, sorry, it's necessary if you're wet blending, for sure. Um, but it's never really necessary when painting. You can, you can get away with unthinned paints. It's just... It aids your paint job. It really does help. Thinning your paints, if you paint in a layering fashion, uh, if you like to you add multiple colors per area, thinning down your paints will do several things. Number one, it, it's thinner. So it doesn't obscure your details. It keeps your details more intact. Two, it's easier to blend. And uh, three, it just doesn't show brush strokes. So it's never really required when painting if you're using a normal hand brush, but uh, it's, it's, it helps. It really does help your paints. Uh, most, if you watch most really high-end painters, I'm not one of them. I do not consider myself an, a really high-end painter. They do thin down their paints, and they paint with thinner layers. That way, it gives them more control over the amount of pigment that they put on each surface. Um, it doesn't show any brush strokes, and it's awesome for blending. Masterland says, "Oh, I missed something. The Blejo range are originally for airbrush, but can they be used for standard brush too?" Yes, and as can the Minotaur range. Um, the Minotaur range can be used by brush. It's harder. Um, what, if you're using them with a hand brush, get, definitely give them a good shake because the pigments tend to settle to the bottom, but you can use them. They are actually very possible to use. I've seen some really cool tutorials where people use the Minotaur or Vallejo Air um, paints for uh, by hand. You can actually use them quite well. I've used the um, Vallejo Air aluminum several times by hand and it turned out really nicely. They're just slightly thinner. Uh, iteration zero. Around 17 minutes, you mentioned the channel Role Playing Game. But the one I found doesn't the correct site. Would one of you more successful than I had reply to this so you can check it out? Jake, thanks in advance. I found it. Let me just double check while I'm, I'm here talking. Role Playing Game. Easy way to do this, I will just, I'll, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to respond to your question. This is by, uh-oh, uh let me reorganize these. Uh, this is by Iteration Zero. So Iteration Zero, I am going to respond to your comment right now. And it's role-playing game. And all I'll do is I'll just go to the previous Q&J. Role-playing game. It's because their official username is Delta Team 101X. So let me see if I can put that. HTTP. Uh, YouTube.com slash user 
slash this should work. Let me just double check it. There we go. I've responded. Now hopefully it looks. There we go. So the link should be uh, put in for you. Joseph Burton says, so hey Jay, do you ever play tabletop RPGs like Dungeons, Dungeons, Dragons, or Pathfinder? No. I recently played a card-based version of Pathfinder. It was cool. It was a lot of fun. Axis6762 says, hey Jay, it's nice to see Dave and Steve give you a shout out on MWG's Banter Bat Rep, number 69, at 49.25. I haven't seen that yet. I'll double go check it out. Thank you very much. Also, how's Mandy doing? She's doing okay. We're, we're taking her in for another set of tests soon, but it looks like she's getting much better. So thank you very much for asking. I think it was some medication that she was on. Shut down her kidneys. So she's slowly getting better. Also, it's great. Uh, Dave, it's really funny. Occasionally, I mention Dave and, and um, Dave occasionally mentions me. We're just, you know, we both, uh, they're good guys. So I wish them well. And they also mentioned me when uh, David Battaglia was on the, their show, on the uh, their live show. Eric Coins, let me see this. Actually, let's hear it. Uh oh. They're kind of funny. Uh oh. Can't open it right now. Okay, I'll open it later. No problem. Oops, I had to reset it again. Who was first? I don't want to skip accidentally skip any questions. Uh, Eric Coins says, Jay, before my back hurt and my eyes got sore when I painted my models, but after I watched your painting tutorial with correct painting technique, sitting posture, it has become much more fun. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you very much. I'm glad you, you appreciate it. You know, that's the thing. Um, you got to have proper lighting. Lighting is one of those things that people don't think about when they're painting their models. And it, lighting is really key. Not as bright as these ones that I have in front of me, which you can see the reflection out of my eyes. I feel angelic. But um, painting is, lighting is really key when you're painting a miniature. Not only does it give you the visibility of the miniature when you're painting it, but it doesn't hurt your eyes. And posture as well. You know, I'm glad it really helps. Because it's one of those things that you just don't, and that's one of the keys. If you're painting a lot of models, it really does take a toll on your eyes and your back. Johnny Torrance says, Jay, hope we're not too late. You're not Johnny Torrance. What kind of video camera do you recommend for battle reports? Do you use any specific kind of lighting? Yes, I do. I use, this is a Canon H, let me see the name. I'm going to look at it right now. Here we go. This is a Canon something. It's a Canon. <laughs> I'm looking around the camera. This is kind of fun. Where's the name of this camera on it? Vixia HF-R300. Canon Vixia HF-R300. And that's my camera type. And it's the exact same camera that Manning Wargaming used prior to its... Um, when they did that Indiegogo campaign to raise funds to get better video equipment. But this is the exact same camera they used to use, and I use it today, and I love it. I've had no problems with it whatsoever, and it's great for my painting tutorials and my battle reports, and it's not very expensive. I think it's like $220 or something. It's, it does HD, 720p HD. But uh, it's, it's, a very, it's a good camera. I recommend it. And for lighting, I yes, I use a green screen kit. Here. Let's have some fun for a second. I use these. Very bright. Ooh. Brightness. I use two of these and an overhead. Uh, they're the normal cameras that you would find in a green screen kit. Oh, sorry, not light. The normal lights that you'll find in a green screen kit. So that's the key. Like all those green screen kits you find on eBay or green screen companies. That's, these are the lights from them. They're studio lights. So thank you very much for your comment, Johnny Torrance. And that's the answer. ZSpect103 says, Hey Jay, I, I here recently started playing and painting, and your pa painting with Jay videos have helped me when painting my tile. Excellent. Far Star Enclave, just with learning basics. My question is, have you ever dealt with people getting upset over something playing an OP army? Yes. For sure. 
Most of the people in my community are nice, but some others get upset over me choosing Tower Dark Eldar. Dark Eldar. Cool. Yes, I, I've dealt... I'm never that person. Um, it, it, it was honestly a little frustrating when people... Like, I... Yeah. It was a little frustrating uh, for my friends when uh, Elder... Like, when the Elder Codex came out, a lot of my friends who played Eldar got really picked on because they... People were mad that they're playing an OP army when they'd already been playing... Uh, sorry, I don't. I just was thinking about whether or not I should divulge this. It's okay. They know who they are. Um, people who played Tau beforehand and people who played Eldar beforehand, they fell into a good codex, right? They most of the people I know have played those armies and playing them for years, and that regardless, the good times and the bad, like me through with Tyranids, and and people shame them and they get mad about that. So I have I've seen it many times. Um, the key is it's not only what army you play but how you play it. If you play as a fun player and you you're a, you're just someone to have a good time with. Most of the time, people will look past it. But if you're a win at all cost player, people will not be happy with it at all. Yeah, and it's snowing in Guelph. So yes, um, which is unfortunate. Zed spec because Farsa Enclave is a very good uh, is a very good detachment of Tau. So I understand, but uh, no, I don't. I don't personally shame people about the army they play. I really don't. Now, most of the time, people know that I'm playing a fun list, and I have faced... I really didn't care too much, but it just doesn't lead to the best battle report when I worked at Mini Wargaming, and people brought, like, a really strong OP army. And I'm like, well, it's going to be a quick battle report. You know? Um, like, uh, there was this battle report that I filmed for... for, um, for Space Marine Week, in which I brought Tyranids, and Owen brought Bike Spam White Scars... And I got tabled turn two. So it was a funny game. I thought it was hilarious, but it, the battle report was not good. No. Silent82 Hill says, Hey Jay, thanks for answering my, about my Grey Knights and Allies Detachment. 1,000 points Grey Knights plus 300 points Allies, Vindicator, Assassin, yep, plus Devastators. It was an Unbound Armies game. Oh, that's what I was wondering. I played my game against Necrons, Main Detachment, and Orcs Allies. That'd be interesting. Wow, was that a game. I bet. Necron player had a lot of shooty units and a flyer. Orc knobs with Orc Psyker in a battle wagon. So one with very close combat... Uh, a very close combat squad put with a shooty list. Yeah. Uh, my assassin killed Orc battle wagon in two shots. Orc Psyker and Necron's Ghost Arc. Arc was killed with one shot. That was one big explosion. Cool. My Paladins won all close combats, killed Necron the Warlord. Excellent. But unfortunately, my Psychic Power, Vortex of Doom, did not kill many Necrons. That's unfortunate, because it removes them... Yeah, I think Strength D. I don't know if it removes them from play, but I think it just automatic wounds. In the end, I lost in my battle, 7-6. Seven, 7 points for my opponent, 6 victory points for me. No problem, that's pretty close. I hope you had a good time, though. Necron player had a band of Gretchen who managed to keep one extra strategic point. Oh, that's what I love about the Gretchen. You always forget about them until the end. So my army killed almost all my opponent's models, but thanks to a low number of models, I could not score more victory points. Anyway, it was a lot of fun with my Grey Knights. Excellent. I'm glad you had a good time. I will definitely play this army more. Greetings from Norway. Good job with all your videos. Thank you very much, Silent82. And I'm glad you had a good time. That's the only thing with Grey Knights, is that... There's certain lists, there's certain games that they're really um, not built for. Like Maelstrom and War Missions can be a really tough time with Grey Knights because they're not very mobile once they get on the table, other than the deep striking psychic power for the Librarian. And uh, they, they're not usually plentiful in squads. So if your opponent just has a lot of guys, they can cover more objectives. Your goal is to kill them. Martin Bernier says, Good day, Jay. Good day, Martin Bernier. If I join Boston Necrot to a squad of 30 boys, does that mean I can infiltrate them? Unfortunately not. Normally, yes, if you attach a guy who allows infiltrate to a squad, it would allow the squad to infiltrate. And Rubik's here playing with a ball. But um, unfortunately, not with Boston Necrot. Now I have the codex right here, and it says Boston Necrot can only join units of commandos. If Boston Necrot is included in attachment at least one squad of commandos, Boston Necrot does not take up a force organization chart. So he can only attach himself to... Uh, two 
commandos, which allows them to infiltrate off any table edge. So unfortunately, it would normally, if, they, if he was allowed to attach himself to them, but not in this particular case, because he's only allowed to attach to commandos. So hopefully that answers your question. Thank you very much for it, Martin Bernier. And the final question of the day, Gabe Vapors. Hey, Gabe. Gabe Vapors. Hey, Jay. I hope you're in the mood for to speculate. Assuming that the next codex to drop is Necrons. I would assume Necrons or Blood Angels. Yeah, that's a good value, pal. And you're the CEO of Games Workshop. What changes or additions would you implement to the codex that you feel the Necrons would benefit? What changes would you make to abilities that you could make as your OP? Running Psychers, would you broaden their scope like Grey Knights, or would you keep them more specialized like Tau? All right. I would first, to, to benefit them, I would give um, Necrons an ability to counter some Psychic ability because they are really screwed in the Psychic phase. They're really screwed. Um, they're not good at anti-Psyker at all. Psychers will walk all over them. Like Orcs, they can walk all over them too. Uh, orcs are really bad against Psychers as well. But uh, I would give them something to counter Psychic abilities. Maybe give them 2d6 or the d6 that your opponent rolls times two for denial rolls, something like that. Because they need something to deny psychic rolls, because psychic walk all over them, especially with their very low initiative. Uh, it's just, it's, it's hard. Yeah, it is really hard for Necrons. Now, um, here's what I do see happening in the Codex. I'm not the, the CEO. I think they're going to adjust the points of their flyers, because their flyers are arguably the, one of the more OP flyers in the game. For their price, um, the Knight Scythe and Doom Scythe are fantastic. So I think they're going to be a cost. They're going to get more costed, you know, higher costs for sure. Um, other things, I think that Mind Shackle Scarabs. They've been kind of going this way with leadership tests rather than three D six because Mind Shackle Scarabs is also very powerful. It'll probably be something like two D six plus two as opposed to three D six, which will give those leadership ten guys a good chance of surviving. Because um, their average roll would be a 9. So 2d6 plus 2 leadership test as opposed to... Like, this is what they did for Shadows in the Warp. Um, they didn't... They are... They basically, or for like, the Doom Malentai power. I think the... Um, I think that's what they're going to do. Mind Shackle Scarabs, I find, are going to be changed because they're stupidly powerful in challenges. Uh, it's a 50-50 shot of the best leadership test failing. And if you're leadership like 8, you, there's a very good chance you're going to fail. And uh, the flyers are the first thing that I think are going to be adjusted in costs. Other than that, I don't see that many huge changes because nothing really seems OP in the Necron Codex other than their flyers and maybe their chariot for their um, for the war for their warlord. You know, the catacomb command barge. Besides that, I really see it being a, a pretty fair codex. Uh, and I said, what would I do to help them? Give them psychic power denial. Yeah. So, they're very good questions. So thank you very much for your comment, your question, Game Papers. So that's it. That's all the questions. I've jade all the cues today. If I missed your 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 cue, please repost it or, you know, restate it or something. That'd be cool. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Q&J. Leave your comments in the comment section down below, and I will, of course, do my best to answer them all in the next video. And uh, stay tuned for more videos. I'm going to keep doing these Q&Js. I just, unfortunately, have been busy on Fridays, especially with the other reviews and stuff. But uh, stay tuned for more videos. So next time, this is Jay saying, please leave your cues in the, in the comment section down below, and I will J them. And happy painting.